A few months back, I took the GR Corolla down to Key West. It was an amazing road trip. And of course, I enjoyed the six-speed manual. But check out what's going on right now. Toyota's just announced that the GR Corolla is getting an automatic transmission option. Today, I'm going to go through all the details. So let's get into it. <laughs> This automatic transmission is the DAT that was debuted in the GR Yaris, which of course we don't get, um, but it also just came out in the LBX Marizo RR, which also we don't get. But let's go and pull up the interior shots here of the new automatic transmission in the GR Corolla. I would have liked to have a little nicer of a, a shift knob here. And I'm seeing these images for the first time uh, because the shift knob on the GR Corolla is really, really nice. And you know, some of them have Marizo signature on it, uh, but we still have the nice stitching on the shift boot and the, um, the pole lever here for the emergency brake. All right, we also have uh, paddle shifters here, which I think we have a higher resolution image of. Okay, there's the two pedals. Obviously, you don't need a clutch pedal in an automatic. And here are the paddle shifters uh, right behind the steering wheel. I guess connected to the steering wheel, the backside. And this DAT is an eight-speed automatic. All right, six-speed manual or eight-speed automatic. We don't have pricing yet, so stay tuned for that because... What if the automatic is more, way more expensive than the manual? So stay tuned for that. And it's no doubt going to get more expensive, the GR Corolla. Um, we have a new premium plus grade, uh, which we'll detail today. We have more torque. So this is getting the Marizo Editions torque. So it's going from about 273 to 295. So we're getting a 22 pound feet of torque boost. We saw this boost already on, I think, the LBX Marizo RR, this is 295. So now that it's standard, you get a nice little torque boost. Horsepower is still around 300. I believe it's 300 on the dot. There you go, 300 horsepower just at 6,500 RPM. On the G16E GTS, 1.6 liter, three cylinder turbo. So that's, I mean, you're just getting a slightly higher tune, which is great, more performance in theory for the same amount of money, but we'll see how much the price hike is. Launch control adopted to help enable powerful acceleration. I would assume that's only for the automatic. Uh, but we'll read into that. Suspension enhancements add stability when cornering. We have redesigned front bumper to improve, improve cooling and aerodynamics. So let's go and look at the front bumper and we'll compare it to the old front bumper. And just like the Honda Civics, um, they killed off the fog lights on the GR Corolla. And that's not going to sit well with a lot of people. Honestly, it's taken a step back. Yes, the cooling's better. They've kind of taken out the fog light area here for this and probably better aerodynamics but it like the like the civic the just the refresh civic it looks worse the re, refresh civic si it looks worse than the pre-refresh i would say this looks worse than the pre-refresh i love the these vertical slots here there seems to be more painted material here on the pre-refresh but that's just my personal opinion we also have some ducks right here on either side of the toyota logo which it looks like we had them on uh, the pre-refresh, but it stands out more, of course, with this, I believe this is supersonic red paint color here. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Do you think it looks better on the pre-refresh or the post-refresh? Obviously, it is just my personal opinion that it took a, a slight step back here, but it gets more cooling. So the thing is, I guess you get better performance in theory, better aerodynamics, but uh, you know, aesthetics are very important to me, especially when I'm buying a sports car or a hot hatch. And yeah, I'll see you guys down below on that. They've also added this aerodynamic piece here right in front of the front wheel on the front bumper. All right, so let's see if we have a side image uh, comparing the two. Let me know if you guys think that, well, obviously this is the, I think this is the um, circuit edition here with the big wing on the back. So let me know if you guys like the side aesthetic better that now that we have this big duct here, um, does it take away from this duct uh, with the GR badge? I don't know. It, let me know if you guys like it. I think it would be been cool if it was put back here, even though it would have been a fake vent because this is just a door panel, but it would have maybe have looked a little bit better back there. Anyways, just, just personal preference there. I could do without it. It doesn't do anything for me. I don't think it looks terrible, but 
again, that's just personal preference. So let's keep reading. Uh, you also get complimentary one year membership to the National Auto Sport Association. So the front bumper has been redesigned to accommodate optional cooling components while si simultaneously retaining aerodynamic performance. All right, so you can add maybe extra intercoolers or transmission coolers or something like that. On the inside, there is a new dark sporty vibe due to the new trim finishes on flat surfaces and switches throughout the vehicle to provide a pleasing tactile feel. Well, let's revisit the interior again. We have the circuit edition on top, a 2023 model year. And then again, we have the new uh, 2025 GR Corolla here. So I wanna see where, what they've done to improve the aesthetics. It looks like this trim piece here is maybe slightly darker, but it could just be the lighting. All right, let's look at the knobs. Um, yes, the knobs don't have the shiny chrome anymore or like this high reflective uh, plastic on the, the switches either. It's kind of all matted out, which is a very subtle, but a welcome addition here. Looking at the driving mode knob, has that changed? It looks like it has. All right, notice how we have these notches here. Um, and look, they, it looks like they added the GR4 logo. So even though we have this nice rubberized texture on the outside, it has been darkened. So yeah, just very, very small changes here to the interior. Look, even the, um, the parking brake button has gone from looks like a shiny, either chrome or a shiny black to just matte black here. So uh, the pedals are unchanged, it looks like. Um, and to the left side here, it looks like the steering wheel is uh, unchanged. Now keep in mind, this is pre -pro This is a prototype. So that's why uh, the Toyota logo here is not finished. So I just don't have the newest images on my hard drive anyways, or should I say the production images on my hard drive, but there you go. Some, some darkened finishes, very, very small additions here for the 25 on the inside. We will see these arriving at Toyota dealerships this winter and additional details and pricing will be shared later this year. Again, I will bring that to you guys when I have that information. Okay, so I'm gonna play some B-roll for you guys while I read about this racing direct automatic transmission. The eight-speed Gazoo Racing DAT is a sports car enthusiast dream offering quick shifting performance and optimal gear selection. The DAT control software has been optimized for sporty driving, different than the GR Supra and GR86 automatic transmissions where gear shifting relies on sensing vehicle behaviors such as deceleration, g-force, and speed. The DAT's optimized software delicately senses the way the driver steps on the brakes and operates the accelerator. With these inputs, it anticipates when gear shifting is optimal even before changes in the vehicle behavior occur achieving gear selection that reflects the driver's intentions and thus leads to shifting that is similar to that of professional drivers. All right, so it seems to be more sensitive on the brake pedal and shifting, downshifting especially in correlation to how much pressure you're putting on that brake pedal, which is very interesting. I, I mean, honestly, I would have to drive it to see how intuitive it feels, but it sounds pretty good. The DAT also allows drivers to focus more on acceleration slash braking and steering maneuvers. So non-professional drivers may be able to drive faster if they decide to hit the track. As a result, it opens up possibilities for a wider range of drivers to enjoy sports driving. The Toyota GR development team used circuit and rally driving courses as a basis for setting the DAT's close gear ratio. They optimized the shift points of the DAT, giving similar ratios to the six-speed manual that maximize delivery of engine power and torque to the wheels and enables optimal performance. Even casual highway driving has an energetic feel due to the ASP transmission optimizing RPMs while at cruising speeds. There are four drive modes on the GR Corolla, Sport, Normal, Eco, and Custom. The DAT was specifically tuned for the Sport drive mode. It was tested and driven all over the world, including race circuits to ensure exciting performance and maximize the driving potential. Because we have higher boost and a uh, direct automatic transmission here, an automatic transmission fluid cooler comes standard on DAT vehicles. For drivers who may be interested in even greater cooling capacity, a sub radiator is available as a factory installed option on the premium grade and standard on the new premium plus grade. So to me, like living in Florida, it's hot as hell. So I'd like to have the extra cooling. If you plan on taking it to the track at all, 
I would absolutely recommend getting the additional sub radiator as well. To improve cornering, they added rebound springs to the front and rear suspension to suppress inner wheel lift during energetic dynamic driving. Uh, the rear coil is the rear coils and stabilizers were also improved to help boost ground contact response and controllability when turning. The trailing arm mounting point, which is the rotation center of the rear axle, has been raised to reduce rear squat during acceleration. This has reduced the change of vehicle posture, enhancing the drive force response when the accelerator is pressed. It also enables a stable cornering posture. The GR4 all-wheel drive system here looks to be unchanged, and that's perfectly fine. Front and rear tours and limited slip differentials are standard on the 2025 GR Corolla. It was not I don't think it was standard on the previous core models. It was optional on the core models, and they're saying, hey, people. We're just preferring to have this. Um, so it looks like it is standard here for our market anyways, that the GR Corolla gets the standard limited slip diffs from Torzin. Launch control has also been adopted for the 2025 on DAT models, like I assumed it would not be on the manual, of course, helping to enable a powerful acceleration off the line. Launch control, here's an asterisk, is not intended for use on public roads or for repeated short interval use. See owner's manual for limitations. So that brake duct on the side of the front bumper is supposed to draw in air more efficiently. An air curtain construction has been adopted, which creates inward airflow at the top of the tire to draw in air flowing in from the front along the side. Turbulence around the tire has been suppressed so the air flows smoothly rearward contributing to enhance handling stability also to help with cooling a sub radiator is now an option like we mentioned to help the engine cooling performance and extending the time that the vehicle can be continuously driven all right so here are the three model grades so core lives on as the base grade but remember it now has standard the tours and limited slips we have a premium grade and from new for 2025 is a premium plus grade. I don't see there's there's no like circuit grade or what the Marizo edition, right? That was very limited. Built on the TJC platform, the GR Curl has a lower center of gravity with wide tires uh, mounted to cast alloy 18 inch wheels on the corn premium grades and 18 inch matte black wheels on the premium plus. All GR Corolla models wear Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires, 235 by 40s. And the new premium plus grade adds standard features that enthusiasts have come to know and love on previous special editions like the carbon fiber roof, the beloved vented bulge hood and matte black wheels. All right. So to me, the premium plus grade is very similar to the circuit edition off the top of my head. I'm not sure what the differences would be. Um, we had that matte, that matte color. I think it was the matte heavy metal. Um, on the circuit edition. So maybe that's what set it apart. But let me know if you guys know down below in the comments what the difference would be between this premium plus grade and the previous circuit editions. Also with the DAT and radar cruise control, you don't have to worry about shifting gears or being in stop and go traffic as much with a manual, right? So you just hit cruise control and the automatic will take over. But it's only set to be used at speeds of 20 miles per hour. So it's not like stop and go traffic by any means. It's not like traffic jam assist that we see on other Toyota models. Standard across all grades, of course, is eight inch screen, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster with the customizable layout and Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. Um, if you want to pause and read everything that's on the core grade, go ahead and do that. Um, here is everything that's on the premium grade, which adds upon the, the core grade. And the, the big upgrades here would be the Bryn Naub uh, suede trim seats. You get the JBL dual climate control, which is not that big of a deal, in my opinion, in such a small car. Heated steering wheel, heated front seats, parking sensors. That, to me, is important for such an expensive vehicle. You don't want to run into anything. Um, gloss black front grille and rear bumper lower cover with functional air vents. So I guess it's matte on the core model, the, the grill and the, the garnishes. Um, available colors include ice cap, heavy metal, black, and supersonic red on the core, on the 
on the premium grade. And for the new 2025 Premium Plus, we have the forged carbon fiber roof, hood bulge, functional gloss, black air vents, sub radiator, which again, it's optional on the premium grade, the sub radiator. We have matte black wheels, head up display. Did we have a head up display? We probably did, I just don't remember, but comment down below, did we have a head up display in the previous GR Corolla? It's like, we definitely don't have a head up display on the normal Corolla or the Corolla Cross here stateside. So let put in the comments if we had a head up display uh, and previous models. I'm going to see if they say anything more about it. No, that's all they say. So interesting, but definitely some welcome updates for the 2025 GR Corolla DAT optional. We have, um, a new sub radiator, which is optional on the middle grade and standard on the top grade. We get 20 more pound feet of torque. We have darkened materials on the inside revised from bumper, which again, I'll have to, I guess I'll have to see it in person to see if it looks better, but they took out the fog lights, which is going to be frustrating to some people. So you get better performance, better handling, um, better aerodynamics, better brake cooling, standard uh, tours and limited slip diffs. Lot, lots of good stuff for the GR Corolla. Um, so yeah, it's, it's better for sure overall. So I'll see you guys down below. Stay tuned for more pricing when it is available. I'll let you guys know. And again, this vehicle is available this winter, so you can start putting deposits in uh, at your local dealer. So thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more Toyota updates. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.